What's going on, folks? Welcome to another episode of the Next Wall Podcast. I'm your host, as always, uh, Kyle Maggio, joined by my co-host, Mike Cortez, and a newly minted A-list celebrity, Sean Geddes. What's going on, my friends? Yeah. What's going on? So, so Sean, I, I do want to hear all about you know, your, your red carpet festivities, but uh, I just want to remind the good folks that this podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. Uh, if you have been riding with us on the last couple of picks, you've been making a lot of money. Uh, I have been betting my hard-earned American dollars on the on those TKW picks of the nights. And guess what? Guess what, my pals? We've been cashing out. Uh, if you've been doing the heart, we did RJ and Harden two nights in a row, over two nights in a row, because it's a no-brainer. I shouldn't have to explain either of those picks to you. Of course, they were going to be over. And, lefty's uh, lock, baby. And, yeah, lefty locks. And uh, we made a lot of money both nights. So if if you're riding with us, uh, the app is uh, – not the app. The the link is always on uh, the pinned tweet uh, on our on our Twitter bio there. And, uh, you know, the, our code is TKW. It's 100% deposit match up to $100. So, you know, if you want to earn some free money, use code TKW. Hop in, make a little money with us. Hey, we're, we're handed out free money. Nothing's better than free money. But, Sean, close personal friend of Ben Stiller. This is a, a, a true thing now, uh, a, a real, a living, breathing truth thing. It, and I said, you know, before, you know, we were catching up a little before we, we started recording. But I was like, it's like a, it's like a fairy tale watching th- this unfold in front of your eyes. Uh, but, Sean, what, what, how, how did it go? You know, why don't you tell the people how the last couple of days went for you and, and, and what went on? Um, I mean, it's been super exciting. I mean, to those of you who don't know, I'm in New York working on a production uh, for a film. So I was just like, yeah, you know, why not, you know, let him know that I'll be in town and see and if he wants to meet. And he really did. And then uh, I happened to allude to RJ being in a Batman commercial in post-game pouting. And he was watching post-game pouting. So he texted me after and he was like, hey, all right, you mentioned Batman. Would you like to go to the premiere? I was like, yes like of course i would um but you know i i can't stress enough what an amazing and cool guy ben stiller is um my words can't possibly do it justice like you know it didn't even feel like not that it didn't feel like i was hanging out with ben stiller but like it didn't feel like i shouldn't be there and i think the ability to be ben stiller and make people you know not feel like they shouldn't be there is really cool um, he's really supportive. He said extremely kind things. The brand is brolic, guys. The brand is brolic. Like CKW to the top. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great time. Um, it's kind of surreal. Uh, once once again, you're not a Nick fan if you're not watching Severance. I can't stress that enough. Apple TV is four ninety nine, five ninety nine, one eighty two. You probably already have it. I, I saw a lot of people tweeting about Ted Lasso, so you have Apple TV. So get on there, watch Severance. Great show. Uh, I think episode four just dropped today, but make sure you watch that. You're not an anything like let's yeah. push our guy forward. That's Ben Stiller, bro. Like that's yeah, but Ben Stiller. He, he's not paying us, but you should actually watch it. Uh, it it's a it's a good concept. I, I was watching it, uh, but you know, I I thought it was realistic and interesting. Uh, you, you're basically you can't access your your work or personal life memories when you're in the opposite spot. You know, I thought that was a wild. Uh, situation to be in so I, it, it got me pretty quick to be honest with you it's a good it's a good show uh, I, and honestly just again nobody's paying us this is this is free you're, you're getting it free for me right now but uh <laughs> app, no, app, apple tv as a whole i've been i've been pleasantly surprised with uh, it start, started slow it was a new app you know a lot, a, lot of, a lot of catching up to do but it's come on strong lately there's some there's some good stuff on there i've been watching the after party there's some decent stuff so you know apple apple tv's done some done a decent job so it, it's it's not that much five bucks is it's like a bag of chips these days with inflation so you know this is the, the, the state of affairs at this point you could afford apple tv <laughs> but um yeah i mean I, look we're all very happy you know sean's got the the, the ben stiller thing going but uh you know the, 
you know, we, we got to bring some bad news to the podcast. It's unfortunate. I hate to be the one to do it. I'm often the one that has to do it, but this is the Knicks podcast and the Knicks are playing God awful basketball aside from one RJ Barrett, uh, who continues to step up and basically since December started again, the, the rosiest numbers, if you go since January 1st, but basically since December has averaged about 23, 24 points a game and kind of all around started to put his game back together after a really disastrous start to the season. Disastrous is maybe a little bit extreme, but he was more just inconsistent, uh, very hot and cold. He'd have a, a good game. He'd disappear for three or four. It was uh, unusual of him to disappear for that long. Seemed like he wasn't prioritizing the offense uh, a lot. You know, uh, they tried to get Evan Fournier going in the beginning of the season in a certain way, a more force-fed manner. Uh, and RJ kind of took a step back a little bit, but he's since found his footing. He's been excellent. Uh, another, you know, Great couple games from him against the Sixers. Uh, the career high forty six point night. He should have had fifty something. Uh, you know, sh- should have, should have. But it's okay. I'll, t- I'll take forty six. He, keep, you know, he's getting close. I think he's got, he's got like eight, nine, thirty plus point games this season now. Something like that. Uh, he's just, yeah, he's just killing. I mean, I mean, he's ripping them off now. That, that's a decent amount of the season. You start getting to like double digits of, of those thirty plus point games. Like now, now, now it's not nothing. You know, now it's not little flashes. Now you're consistently scoring thirty plus in the NBA. Like you know, so. Mike, I'm going to throw it to you first on this, but I, again, I, I know the Knicks are in the pits right now. Uh, I I think a lot of what we're going to end up saying on this podcast is uh, uh, everything that we've mostly said, you know, in terms of the complaints. So I'd like to just focus on, hey, we know that they're we know that they're going to lose. Okay, we know that the play is not going to happen anymore, right? I mean, it would take a miracle for playing, uh, but RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett, I'm like casual 28, six and seven, you know, or RJ Barrett, you know, I mean, everything's bad, but that's, that's pretty good. That's yeah, very good. I think RJ and Sean have been the two best storylines for the Knicks in 2022, believe it or not. Last 15 games, two and 13. It's been pretty awful outside of RJ, but like you said, RJ has been a different man and the main difference has been attacking. He's been attacking at will, and now we're starting to see Thibodeau kind of reward that. The last two games, RJ started the game with the ball in his hands, which is a very drastic turn from the beginning of the year when he was mostly in the corner to start games, and it was Julius and his Fournier, as you led uh, led to, starting it. So that's been the real difference for me. Now I think you kind of have to double down and start to put people around RJ that he plays with very well mainly Cam Reddish. We see the difference Cam's had when RJ's on the floor with him. He brings a defensive dynamic that's just non-existent in the starting lineup, mainly in the past, disrupting the passing lanes. They really need something like that just to get their energy going. And then RJ's been the only guy to find Mitchell Robinson. And Mitchell Robinson is very ready to contribute. He just doesn't get the attempts. And I know we're going to, we've shown Burks the last God knows how many episodes, all well-deserved. and. Last night, it got to the point where RJ was just like, fuck it, I'm going to have to play make two. Just, I think it was either six or seven assists. I'll have a flip that with rebounds. So he's literally, he's quite literally doing everything. And it feels good to not only see fellow stars acknowledge it, but now the national folks that usually like to say, well, RJ, eh, can he do it consistently? There's nothing about this streak that feels inconsistent. He's actually, just for reference, he's averaging maybe, I think, yeah, I'm looking right now. He's averaging around the same field of attempts as Randall the last 15 games, shooting the same from the field, but the production is just much better. So I think this is finally sustainable. I know when we had our good friend Chris Herring on the pod, it wasn't about can RJ do this, is can he do it for an extended period of time? And I think he's finally found that other gear. So at this point, that's probably the only salvageable piece of the season. I think you shut down Rose, you shut down Quentin Grimes, who we lost to a was a subluxation of a knee or whatever the fuck that is. He's, I would just shut those two down. Dislocate. It was a dislocation. Yeah. Why they have to get like super like high tech with it? Yeah. Just thank you. Calm down. Nick's medical. I mean, (laughs) I was like, I never heard that. Thank God we have Ray on the team now. Shout out to Ray. That he kind of, like his knee's not in the right place. So I was like, no, Thanks. nobody's first response should be like, oh, now I got to go to Google and figure out what this. No, none of us know what that means. You can't expect any of us to know what that means. Just put it basic right. terms. You have to assume that we're stupid. All right, continue. Right. And then, yeah, so I would shut those two down and play Deuce McBride, man. And there's really just no, 
I can't. I was. I've been trying to find any argument, and then I remember Deuce said that a coach. He didn't say the coach's name. Said, "Oh, well, you're a rookie. You have to earn it." I don't know what else he has to earn by default because even Emmanuel Quickly, who I love, he hasn't given a whole lot of opportunity to even get more playing time himself, let alone block Deuce and Burks. We kind of explained that nauseam at this point. So that's where I'm at right now. R.J. Barrett, develop him to hell. Make him the top option, which he is. Keep him the top option, I should say, and let everything else fall into place. Uh, yeah, man. RJ's him. Like, RJ's him. RJ's here. It's a great and beautiful thing. And honestly, it's really all that matters from this season. I mean, you know, after last night's game, I really, you know, was – I was like, yo, do we have to talk about this team? Like, do we have to do post-game pouting? You know? Um, and I'm glad that I did it on on Twitter, of course. But um, it was very therapeutic because it was I was able to get to a point and share with others as well. And we like, it's over, it's over. The season's over. Um, I no longer have. To, I, I feel kind of free. I feel kind of free. We're still the kids we used to be. But anyway, but um, yeah, like because the as we all know, it happens to all of us. Fan has a, a, a disease. Like losses and all of that stuff was taking way too much of a toll on my mental health. Like my head hurts after games, my chest hurts. I'm sad. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to. I just want to sit there and like my. I, I'm in my room with the lights off. It's just dark. It's it's dark and it's sad. And you know, like I'm not allowing that to happen anymore. We've won one game since February. I mean, since January ended. Um. So at this, we have to take our own preventative measures. The season's over. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, we got to just take what we got. Like, at the end of the day, when we look at the season 10 years from now, like, it'll just be the season that R.J. Barrett took that step and broke out. Like you said, how many 30-point games, Mike? Right now he's at eight, which leads right – I, I got to check the group, but he leads, like, most of the top players. I know Ann Edwards was in that group, but he's up there. Is that eight? And I feel like probably seven of them are on national television. So that's why, like, the league has to be, like, you know, there's, only, there's so many things you, you can't say much anymore. Like, the RJ haters, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling them to come outside. I'm not even bothering, man. It's such a blissful silence. I love it. I, we watched them talk about a, a lot of nonsense for a lot of time and feel vindicated and feel like they were right and try to prey on his downfall, and it was real nasty. But now those people are nowhere to be found. There's certain, there's certain abbeys I don't see anymore. You know, start getting those. Uh, or I, somebody just issued an RJ Barrett apology to me. Start getting that apology for him circulating. He's him. He's here. Like the way the forty-six point game, man. Like could have easily been a fifty piece, easily if he just knocks some free throws down. And that's one of those things. I hope next year, you know, my expectation and my goal for next year for him is for him to be a seventy-five percent free throw shooter. I think that's attainable. I think he works very hard. I think it's realistic for him to come. I don't think that's a lot to ask for. I would love 80, but come back and shoot 75. Take take a step, and that can add, you know, an extra point or two, uh, be a little more consistency. I mean, ever since the uh, New Year, he's been averaging 24 points a game. Like you were saying, that's top 40 range of, like, you're a top, you're a top player in the league if you're averaging 20, 24, 25 points a game. And then you add to that solid defense. Um, you know, you see the playmaking chops that were there on display last night when you put the ball in his hands a little bit more, you get some better guys around him. I mean, I just think that, you know, I knew it from the jump, man. I just, I knew it from the moment that we got that third pick in the lottery. I knew it from the moment we drafted him. I knew that RJ was the one and it just feels great to be vindicated. We all, we all have been like, this is our victory lap and we don't even really have to run. Like we, it's almost like we're on a victory lap on a chariot and it's beautiful. We're just like. It well, makes me so happy. But I, I was gonna say that's that's much more rosy than what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, as, as high as I was on him, I, even I was just like, with real good defense, I see a real a real good all around twenty five five guy. I think that's what he shapes up to be. And now he might be a twenty five 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 guy, right? And you're like, with, with the defense and twenty five, you know, five and five is that kind of all around game. You know, you you kind of know what guys. Uh, you know, kind of get thought of in this league when they start kind of putting up those kinds of numbers, you know, it's a real upper echelon. You start to enter, you know, I have, I don't know what the way everybody, everybody, I, I hate rankings. 
even when I said, you know, top whatever before, I hate rankings, you know, just top couple tiers, however you want to start to rank them. When you get guys averaging those, you know, that's why Luca, right? Shot up, the, you know, he's always averaging 28, 30, right? Seven, you know, 10. When, when those all around numbers start to rise up, you, you rise to a certain level, right? So I think, like, you know, the only real thing that's going to come, you know, that we got to wait for now is his success pairing up with wins really um, is the next thing because it hasn't, you know, there was a lot of success last year with him taking a big step. I wouldn't want quite call it a stride or a leap last year, but he took a really big step last year. Right. And uh, it helped them, right. They made the playoffs. It, it helped with some wins this year. You know, it, it has not gone as expected, which it, that's fine. You know, things can happen. It just got to be perfect every season. But if he's showing that he could be a, a real top one ish option, that changes the equation. That always changes the equation. Whenever we talk on this podcast, this is why I always got annoyed before with the the like fake hopeful stuff with every prospect. Because you can like kind of see if a guy's got it or not to a degree. Like in terms of like all around impact, the guy who's really going to impact the game of basketball fully and truly, right? Not just the guy who's going to play a small role or oh well, his defense is important and da, 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 da. you know like sure it is, but it's not going to impact as much as you think it's going to impact. It's not about the points, but it is, right? Like with RJ, it's not about the points, but if he taps out at a 20-point guy versus a 25-point guy, it's a lot different, right? You look, you look at a 20, 18, 20-point-per-game 20 guy a lot differently than you look at a guy who's averaging, you know, 25-ish. So it, it's just what it is. Like, it, it's always about the points. So don't, for me, it'll always come back to that. RJ's doing that. It looks real good, uh, you know, and, and that's why, like, when you paint the, I was getting annoyed a little bit with the, you know, the overly optimistic Knicks future outlook stuff, because it's like, yeah, they do have their own picks. Like it's not the end of the world. They could get out of some of these deals. Like they, they are currently capped out, but it's not inescapable. Like, it's not like I'm worried about that. So they're in a decent position, of course, like you could still get out of stuff, but like when a, a guy who's 21 years old takes a leap like this, it really, you know, makes the picture look a little bit better. Cause now it's like, okay. At worst, you can go nuclear, right? Really clear everything out. And you're just like, we're going to lock him in because holy shit, right? I mean, we're getting, you know, if he finishes the year out and he's still putting up, you know, 25-ish tonight, right? He's going to finish the season averaging over 20 now to make up for the first couple months. He might get to 21 depending on what the scoring outload is going to be, right? Uh, but that means you get what? five straight months of him giving you 23 point per game or better basketball. That means realistically, yeah, you should go into the next season for me expecting like that. I, I would expect that from you. You just did it. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, you got you slow start is what it looks like to me, buddy. Like you gave me five great months. Are you kidding me? Like I would a hundred percent expect that. So if you could expect, that guy on your team, like, we couldn't say that last year. We're like, well, Randall's got to basically be on fire all year again, was like the hope, right? And we even knew there was going to be some kind of a regression, which meant maybe not 24 points again, right? Maybe, he get, you know, he comes back down to, like, 22. It's been a little lower, but, like, that was the expectation. If you get another guy instantly comes out of nowhere on your own roster who does that for you, again, yeah, it changes the equation. So it's good to see. I just want to see we got five weeks left. You know, play in, no play in, like Sean said. I don't really care too much anymore. I let go. Uh, you know, last year it was fun, real positive. We had a lot of fun times. Uh, you know, good celebrating on this pod. But it's not really working out this year the way that we all hoped. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. This is the one true year where I could actually get behind, like, oh, yeah, you know, at, at least we got so-and-so playing more minutes and, and playing well. Like, I didn't care before for a lot of the prospects that, you know, you guys know how I felt, but like RJ truly, it's just like, okay, well, you know, th there's a continual emphasis on letting him run offense. Like he continually still is looking for Mitchell Robinson. You know what I mean? Like, that's a real thing. Like, you know, he's still, I mean, he was late. The, the one pass I'm thinking of now, or I don't know, he just missed it, but the point, I think Mitch still put it in, but the point is like the fact that those guys are still working together with that rapport he's getting to the basket more, you know, like with, patience now that was one thing i tweeted the other night uh he's very like he finally knows how to like step everywhere in the paint it seems like he always sort of finds the right spot he's not crashing into anybody anymore uh, he's he's sort of like all right well i could take a slow step here i could take two slow steps here i can just pivot here oh i'll just wait a second i don't gotta rush i'll step through and this is gonna be a layup you know so that was my favorite play last night i think it was a, a break and i thought he was gonna pull up for a shitty three 
but he kind of did like a little hezzy and then went right to the rim and got an easy layup. Like we didn't really see that that much. Oh my God. Last season. So happy. Because that I mean, he's enforcing his will, I guess. Now that I'm talking through it with you guys, I guess that's kind of really the decider for where a guy's ceiling can be. And he has his pulse on the game right now. Ever more, even more than Randall had last year. Like Randall last year, like you said, Kyle, you could tell his crazy shots. RJ just has his pulse on the game in every facet for New York right now. So I think that's why people should feel hopeful more than anything beyond the numbers. Yeah. And it's like, like, like you said, like it's, it's the subtleties of like, you know, the footwork getting to the basket and the overall confidence, man. Like he looks like he believes he's the best player on the floor, even out there with James Harden and Joel Embiid. Like he just looks like he believes he's the best player on the floor and it's translating into his game. And I believe translating to how the team operates around him. And I'm man, we, we said year three was going to be a movie and well, I mean, it's a horror film, but you know, <laughs> It's still a movie. So, you know, hopefully this progress going into the next year, you just build on certain things. Uh, we, we saw him add a lot to his game coming in this year offensively. Uh, we saw, like, last, up, up until now, RJ had one 30-point game. You know, so we saw we saw him step forward as a scorer a lot, come back with the more consistent uh, shot from the free throw line. Um, you know, even better pull-up shooting. It's, it's, it's curtains for the league. It's saying it. It's saying it for a little while now, and it's happening. So, RJ Barrett, man, that's all I really care about the rest of the season. Yeah, RJ no, Barrett and everything around him. Yeah, it, it just, they just look. They just got to do smart building around him, and I think they kind of know what that means because of the way the play style is tailored when he runs the offense. Now it's downhill, right? It's usually a higher pick and roll. They like to do it off one of the sides, right? Off one of the wings, and uh, they like to give him an aerial threat because it helps him space out a little bit easier it helps them figure out you know oh i can actually get in for a layup they're going to play mitch here you know it, it helps him more because he crashes in a lot without it right so you kind of know what you need you know what you need so you're either going to lock in mitch because you got to do that right so you, you like that option you think mitch is sufficient you're going to lock it in you find someone who could do that which i that's fine as long as you do it right but other than that you need shooting because it seems like rj has a knack for you know, trying to swing the ball often. I mean, he's been much more pass happy in 2022. Um, you know, it's it's funny sometimes when he's like overly, like you, you see he's like ready to whip the pass. Like there was the one pass he threw in between Randall and uh, Fournier the other night, and it was a bullet. So like I, he was like, I think he was expecting, or, you know, one of them was supposed to be in that spot. I don't know, but he was, he stopped precisely and just rocketed it over. And uh, he missed, but I mean, I got a kick out of it because, like, you just seeing him do like set passes, like in, in a play like that. It's like this guy's like always actively trying to move the ball. Like, and again, I don't want to like oversell it because there's plenty of games where he has no assists or like two or one. I mean, let's let's keep it a buck, like three or less. He's got a lot of them, right? But he's he passes. I can't, you know, I don't know if it's hockey assists, but he does move the ball around. Like the ball is, the, it, it doesn't stick. Like he, he usually makes it an attack too. The thing is like, you know, I'm not trying to give him all, you know, too much credit. Like his handle also isn't like good enough yet for him to just be like dribbling around without going somewhere, you know, like it is a little bit suspect still. So he's got to like kind of move it or lose it. You know what I mean? So I, either way, the point is like, he's figuring his game out. He's been smarter about it. He's been more decisive about it. Uh, it it's good stuff to see. This is what you want. Uh, I didn't know if we were going to get, like, number one option potential out of him, but, I mean, we're, we're definitely seeing it now. It's nice. You know, may, maybe it works out for us year four. He takes the big leap where, you know, under, you know, like the, the, the undeniable, like the John Morant this season, like undeniable number one option. There's no debate. Nobody has to talk about it. It's clear. And they're winning some games this way. And, and now it's the RJ Bear era officially. And we'll see where that goes. You know, I, I'd like to see what that universe looks like. I don't know how much of a team shakeup it'll be, but the way the offense is transitioning, at least it works a little bit better. It's just uh, unfortunate in this offense, Alec Burks is the point guard, which will remain so pretty much the entire rest of the season. Uh, Derek Rose had a procedure. He was going to miss another week, possibly two weeks. It was a cleanup procedure on the ankle. Uh, 
after he was sort of gearing up to come back. We saw a lot of him shooting around before the games, warming up. He just never quite made it into a game. He did make it into a couple of practices, and then he had to get the procedure done on the ankle. So looks like mid-March, we might get him back, right? You know, really start tramping it up again. End of March, and then we got, what, two weeks left in the season? It's It's kind of... Like, why why bother to a degree, you know? Like, we should just see what we got. We, we, we failed, man. We had we had the stretches. You, you got it. You had to have one in January or February. You had to have a stretch. I think they won one single game in the month of February. Uh, that's it. That's it. You know, I mean, you can maybe, you know, stumble into a play-in game, but this is not what you want, you know? Um, so, look, it's okay. This, this is what comes with having expectations now. Uh, we, we got a taste of it last year. Um, you know, this is why I said, you know, we got to walk before we can crawl. You got to figure out a way to just get back to the playoffs every year before worrying about, you know, extra shit, but we'll see what happens. You know, uh, I just, I like what we finally got with RJ here, you know, just thinks that there's not much else anymore, you know, like OB at least gave us the dunk contest, you know, that was nice. That was, fun. That was good. He tried his best to ruin it as usual. I thought Obi was good. So this this is my thing. I I the issue I felt was it couldn't it could have been better. The only well we always say that right generally right. But I felt like because he didn't flush. Obi, well, no, I just felt like Obi didn't have to really do anything when it was his turn, his couple turns at the end because like they, they kept fucking up. So he just kind of had to like he kept trying to like do give you the show, you know, like I. I let me see if I get the first attempt down, you know, first, second, whatever. And then if not, I'll do, I'll do a real good, safe dunk. Right. But that's what I kind of just felt like happened. It was like, you know, I mean, it was, it was fine. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just glad Obi won. I don't care that much, but uh, that, that was my thing. It was like, there, there were so many misses and then it was like, all right, I'll, you know, stop fucking around. Just put, put, put the ball in, get, get your 40, get your 41, you know, it beats this guy's 30, whatever he got. And let's just get on with it. Yeah, you really need two oh. people to tango for a good dunk contest. I think the dunk contest won't be the same until, like, the big names start doing it again. I mean, I've thought that for years. I thought that's what it's going to take. Um, but I don't know. I feel like Obi did some really nice dunks, dunks we hadn't seen before. There was creativity to him. He didn't throw them down as hard. But, you know, I mean, he jumped over somebody and went behind the back. The dunk off the backboard, I feel like people don't understand. Like, that was ridiculous. Like, yeah, it was I don't really know that's ridiculous. I don't even like, I'm like, even as I think about how he did it, I'm just like, I don't even know where I begin. Um, so, you know, and I was cool, but yeah, it's nice to get a win. Uh, we haven't won much. The dunk contest is the only thing we won in February other than that game that Tom took almost gave away against the Warriors. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Like as far as the season, man, but the dunk contest, though, we were winners on All-Star Weekend. That's what matters. Yeah, so. It, look, it, 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 it is what it is, you know. But, um, I mean, what I mean, what else really is there, you know, for us to Tom really. Thibodeau? Let's just shit on Tom Thibodeau for, like, an hour. Yeah, I just, so I, I know that the, I was in the press the other day, and he, and he mentioned the lineup, and he goes, you know, oh, like so somebody had pushed back. Well, like, what? Well, how could you think? Like, they didn't say it like that, but like, you know, how 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 could you think that the Alec Burks point guard lineup is the best one? Like, it was essentially the question, and he was just like, you know, almost like I'm glad you asked. You know, well, uh, I have here the Alec Burks led lineup is a is a plus twenty seven. It's a, it's a positive net rating, line. and I was like, this is like three or four games ago, and I was like. And I was typing on my phone as fast as I could. And I and I I promise you, I thought I got the quote wrong. I didn't tweet it out. Begley tweeted out like two hours later. And I, I had it in my drafts. I didn't tweet it out because I was like, there's no fucking way. He's like, what is, there's no way it could have been positive was my first reaction. Like, there's just no way it was positive. And, and of course, it was like plus, you know, 27. It wasn't like, you know, some extreme amount to be up, you know, with all the minutes that Burks has played point guard, you know. Okay. So, I mean, it's like, it's like one good quarter, of it, you know, basically uh, that, that you're up. But it, it, I digress, right? So the, that that was his point. But I was typing it and I was like, damn, there's no fucking way that that lineup is a plus. And it was at that time. 
But it stinks, man. Like, like he does look, and again, it, this is this isn't even like I feel bad for Alec Burks at this point, bro. This is I, I'll keep it a buck. I feel bad for him. He's miscast. This is classic miscasting of a Nick. He he does not deserve to be in the outsized role that he is in. He needs to be in his little Swiss Army knife bench role off the wing, doing his his quasi, you know, playmaking. Uh, stepping up to be the you know late game heroics hot hand score like this is you can't play this guy th- th- this much it's just not you can't do it you can't ask him to do it it's doing him a disservice just professionally now you can't do this to him uh, like I'm begging you to stop like I'm throwing the towel like I'm begging you to stop like I like Alec Burks I I enjoy having a bench score like Alec Burks on the bench last year. It was a calming presence to know we had a consistent dude. I, I understood what Tibbs liked in him. It's not like we, we don't see it. We don't, we get it right. We, we understand he's a nice player. We know what the appeal is to Alec Burks. That guy's not a starting point guard. All right. He's just not, he's not all right. We have other options. You could try out, you know, nothing. This is, this is what we always say on this podcast, right? Boys, we've done a lot of losing in this pod, a lot of talking about losing. What do we always say? Try some. If nothing else is working, just try something else. Out. You 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 are free at any time to try out anything else, at anything else at any point in time. You don't have to keep trying the same thing. And he just keeps trying out Alec Burks. Even and I'm over the forty. Listen, I, I haven't said a word about forty eight almost all twenty twenty two. You ever? He can go to his listen, shot selection is so fucking awful. You know, you know you're gonna hear it from me, but look, I haven't said a word at him because he's been good. I said, if he at least does his job and he scored, then then I say, Sean, I said, if he does his job, if he's scoring the basketball and nothing else, I can't, I won't even complain about the defense because I know I already knew not to expect it. All right. But if he's at least scoring the ball real well, I'm not going to say a word. You hear it's March 3rd. Nobody heard a word out of me. There was no, there was no 48 slander. I gave him, it's not even about that anymore. And I knew he had his bad night the other night. I, I, I know, I know we can get back to it. He might be called the rest of the season. Who knows? But he had a pretty good 2022, but yeah, I mean, losing Grimes sucked. I, I thought that was, you know, it, it could have been worse. Uh, I I thought that was going to be the worst of it. I was like, this is the last thing we need. Because I, I I don't know, I, I'm not trying to put ceilings on anybody. I didn't see like star potential in Grimes. But I was like, man, this guy, he could be a rock solid starter. Like at, at least for right now, sure, I, I'm not trying to like long-term vision, but short term, like this dude is next two, three years. Rock solid starter. I could see rock solid. Like that's that's all I kept thinking of. Like just like a consistent like yeah. Like he's gonna hit three threes a game and play good defense, guaranteed. No, no matter what else happens, like that's that's a lock. Like that that's all I had in my head for him, right. When he went down, I was like, oh man, it looked like non contact. I was like, this is the worst, man. This is the pits, bro. He's not even like a super duper star. Look at this, unbelievable. Thank <laughs> God it was. Thank God it was not. It was not anything worse, but. I don't know. Something's got to give man. You got to do something different. It, Sims got more minutes lately. Much to Sean's uh, delight. I mean, he's finally getting some burn. He, he had a great uh, first quarter at MSG the other night, but I mean, not much else has really changed. Is Nerland's an expiring this summer? Because I can't take it. He's played twenty five games this far. Twenty five games this year. And when he is playing, he's just dropping the ball and just generally farting on the court. It's I can't take it anymore. Like, there's so many of these guys that just are giving absolutely nothing on a nightly basis. It's just like, like Burke starting, I can live with. I cannot live with the lineup jiving. And then Thibodeau saying, okay, you know what? I got to put Alex Burke back in. Like, why? Why? Like, what are you seeing? Was it Sunday that, the, the, like, the, was it, I think it was Sunday that the lineup was, it was OB, Randall, Reddish, IQ, RJ, I think it was or some variation of, like, good young players. And then it was 106-105. Alec Burke comes in, they lose by 15. I don't Last seven minutes. I have ever heard the word no scream louder. Like, like no what the fuck? Sunday. And when I looked out there and I saw Alec Burke's on the court with six minutes left, I was like, no, no. And everybody around me was dying laughing. But it's just like, bro, like, I have seen this movie so many times. Like, how do you keep doing this? What about today, bro? Like, that game, and I really, like, you know, I said for my mental health, I'm not getting worked up about this stuff anymore, but damn it, man. For this last, this pod, one last time. Like, I don't get it, bro. Like, Alec Burks played 34 minutes that night, which means before you put him back in the game with six minutes left, in 28 minutes, he had given you six points and zero assists. Zero. What? 
what about that made you feel like he had to get back in the game? Like, I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. It's just like, no matter what happens in the game, and it's, it's the most nauseating thing, no matter how things are going, no matter what the state, he's, Tom Thibodeau is going to do the same thing at the same time, no matter what, and that's disgusting. It's disgusting. No matter what time, no matter how often it hasn't worked, like, it doesn't make any sense, bro. I can't wait until he's gone. I can't plan for anything in the future. I can't get excited about anything until Tom Thibodeau is gone. He needs to be gone. I'm done. In case I haven't said it enough here on this podcast, in case, I am done with Tom Thibodeau. He's an absolute war criminal. I need him escorted off the premises immediately because it's out of control. It's out of control. It doesn't make any sense. It hasn't made any sense for a long time. I got to a point where I gave a lot of leeway with things. As Kyle was just saying, we shut up about Evan Fournier. So like, we let things go a lot. But like it's out of control. It's out of hand. And he has no respect for my intelligence, my well-being, my mental health, or my basketball acumen. Like, no way you – like, we he benched Kemba 10 to 15 games into the season, maybe 20. There are 20 games left. And somehow Alec Burks is still starting at point guard. When we got the notification, we were like, Alec Burks at point guard. I don't know. That's not, He's not a point guard. We were – he's not a point guard. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see if it works. It didn't work. Right away, it didn't work. And somehow, months later, we're still doing it. And that's disgusting, bro. Absolutely disgusting. He should never get another job ever again. I, I never understood why they gave him a five-year deal to begin with. I, the tips exhaustion, I think Kyle will help me if I'm wrong, but it's usually, what, like year two, year three maybe. He was a classic. I, just before we shit on him, one quick thing. I do appreciate he did. he does play a role. People that say RJ developed on his own, Stop it. He all he instilled good work habits for the whole team. So he should be appreciated for that. But I would have given him like a two, three-year deal because the exhaustion was gonna hit at some point. I didn't think it was gonna be this quickly, but five years is just like you know you're gonna at least eat one to two of those years. But that's the big thing is um so I think they gave him five years because they wanted stability. I think they wanted to get like the guy that would come in and set a baseline and they could keep a name in for a while. And it finally would put an end to the coaching carousel of every year and a half. Somebody gets canned. And I thought, you know, I, I thought this is what we said last year, right. Entering this year, we said it would, you'd have to really, if you're Tibbs and like the Knicks front office, you'd have to like really spectacularly fail this season to like make people turn on you because I mean, people were ready to go to war for Tom Thibodeau last year, war for that man, war. They would have followed into a burning building. They would have followed Tom Thibodeau. Amazing. Right. Oh, well, one season, a good defense, you know, team plays hard will do for you. And uh, again, a season we were mostly 500 and then there was a nine game winning streak. Right. Like I, in my brain, it separates very clearly that way. Like it was mostly 500 ball, but funner because RJ was a little bit better. Randall was on fire, you know, but I mean, that that was last season, right? It was a good season, whatever. But this season, not the case. Like a total one eighty. People have done on, on Tibbs, which rightfully, right? Like the Tibbs fatigue doesn't usually come into statistically. I think it's a year three. I think we do say year two Tibbs, but I think it's year three. Like normally, he gets two good years. He makes the playoffs, right? Like that much he does he establishes the baseline he establishes like this, this is what i do here whatever i know how to win i know how to grind us into the playoffs and then usually after that there's some sort of a fallout so i that's what i thought was going to happen honestly and i was good with that i i was good with year 3 we get sick of tibs depending on how bad it gets you know maybe maybe that year maybe we get to year 4 probably get to the axe early. Now we hire phase two coach, whoever that is, we hire phase two coach. That's how I thought it was going to go. This is a little early for me. And this is like elite fucking up. Cause this is, this is like lack of doing anything. Like he could be doing anything else and he's doing anything besides that. Like, like Sean said, like nothing, like nothing changes. He just, he just shows up, says, this is, the, this is the, very literally, this is the best we've got. That's it. Like at the presser, that's literally Tom Thibodeau. This is the best we got. Straight that's face. Also disgusting to say as a coach. Like that's that's truly disgusting to say as a coach, especially when you got a guy who you literally haven't given a chance yet. Like Deuce McBride, and I'm not even like the super Deuce McBride, but he has not gotten a chance. 
So they keep starting Alabers and say that's all we got. Like that what? But this goes this this goes hand in hand with my point of there's some sort of disconnection with whatever the plan is with selecting players in this draft and using the draft picks because how does it make sense to have, for example, like you just said, a coach who doesn't value the players behind them. It's not even just Deuce. It's like quickly struggling. For example, we know Burks isn't a point guard. Tibbs admits this, but he still plays him a point guard. Tib quickly is not a point guard, right? But why can't he play point guard? Like it doesn't, We'll never know. We'll never get. The, we'll never get the answer, right? Like it's just how it, things work here. But why not try him? You know, like you never know what you, you're going to get out of a guy. So it's just. I feel like he's been buying nasty. time for Rose to come back, which is already a plan for disaster. Because if your team's success hinges on Derrick Rose, I mean, I love Derrick Rose. He's a great player, but at this point in his career, if your team's whole success hinges on him, that's not doing. Rose no favors or the team. Like Reeves, you have to, like, 45 like, million. Yeah. No, no, like I, I, Rose should be good, but it's Thibodeau's rely like over reliance on him, Taj to a lesser extent. And just he just goes, it feels like he's like you could feel like he's pinned to a corner and he's just sticking with his guys, which Alec Burks is clearly one of his guys. And it's just like, bro, you really don't have to do that. Like there is other ways to like get yourself out of this corner and he's just not doing it. Yeah. He's just not, I don't know. He's just not inventive enough. You know, um, I, this is why when coaches do their PR tours, it's sometimes funny. Cause you heard like, Oh, he's going around. He's learning new offenses. He's That's learning. what blows my fucking mind. What the fuck did you learn, dude? It's the same. It's the same offense. It's the same, same offense. It, same it, everything. It, it's the same. It's the same. I, I have my ball handler or two that I prefer and I trust and I like, and they run a lot of these little handoffs and little, these little switches and that's it. And we just, we, we run at the rim. We just, we, we do that a bunch and you know, you, we, we take our shots wherever our guys feel comfortable. Like it's the same offense. He's had different guys and it's always been the same. Like it's been Jimmy kind of hovering in his spots, right? Cat kind of hovering in his spots. Like we, we watch the wolves. We watch these Knicks, you know, we watch the old Bulls. We know what he does. So it is what it is, man. Like, I I appreciate the phase one aspect of what he's done. I do think to a degree it was much needed. But, again, this is what comes with expectations. You got to have somebody who's able to adapt and adjust. That's why certain coaches are successful in this league and certain ones are not. Greg Popovich is successful for a lot of reasons. Obviously, he's, he's a brilliant genius but he's had so many versions of the Spurs and he's never willing to uh, stop adapting them. Like even playing DeMar DeRozan a long time too, to that point as a power forward full time. I mean, you know, Tim, Tim Duncan, right. Was playing a lot of power forward then started playing more center to play more small ball. Like he's always willing to just be like, all right, man, that makes sense. Works for me, man. Does it help us win the basketball game? Does it give us a better chance? Is it different than the, the shit that was slowing us down? Let's try it out. And good coaches are like that. And I feel like Tibbs isn't really being like that. He just decided that, you know, Burks and a couple of his guys were were the ones he would trust. And that's that. That's all we're going to get this season. That's all we've got. And it's been the same losses every year. It's just frustrating, man. It's just really frustrating. I'm just really at my wit's end with this guy. And I know Johnny Bryan, I mean, Johnny Bryan's clearly done a good job and helping RJ develop. And I'm sure there's other coaches that have contributed. So I'm ready for Johnny to take the helm. Maybe they're waiting for that big trade. I, I, I think it was a week ago or two weeks ago, the whispers are starting to come out. Worldwide West is planning a big move. We'll see if that's more lip service because that's literally been the only news from the front office in like the past 14 months at least. Leon Rose has been absolutely silent. And wet, the, this West news is probably the first news that we've heard. So hopefully that's in the works and Johnny Bryant's the final piece once if a big move is made. Big big shake up. I need a big shake up this summer. I'm unapologetic about it. I need big trades. I need a lot of clearing out of these contracts. I need you be taking a big swing on a, on, a, on a real talent. Go get me somebody top end. Go get RJ Barrett some help. That's it, right? Only only do the league. Go scorched earth. Do whatever you got to do. Change as much of that roster as you can to retool. 
Get Tibbs out of here. Give me a new coach. I need a guy wheeling and dealing. I mean, you know, we need to be playing up tempo offense, run with RJ, you know, go heliocentric. I don't give a fuck. Change it up, though. Change it up. Let's play different basketball. We could do some different shit, man. I mean, but big moves. You got to, I saw the West report, but like, we really need things to be happening here. Like, you know, because again, I last year was good and bad for the reason of expectations, but one is also like, you clearly saw your flaws and where you needed to get to the next level. And also us failing this year kind of reminds you of how not to go about it. So you took one misstep, like you can still alter this thing and go in another direction and figure it out. Like you kind of know what those warts are very easily now, more than when you were free falling, you know? So like you have some direction, just figure it out, you know, just, but we can't sit around and wait forever. You know, we're, we're the New York Knicks. We have money. We have some things that assets and things to work with, like go figure it out. Like really, you know, coaches, players, everything this year. Uh, I, I want a big shakeup, man. Really, really, truly. I wasn't on the fire tips shit, but you know, at this point I just don't care. This is, it, it's too underwhelming a job. It, it's too, it's too far a step back for, for my liking. So I think whatever happens, happens. He dug his own grave. He had his own chances. Yeah, he's given, he's been given every chance. Get out. Like I'm not even being like proactive, lose your job type of person. But when you're this stubborn and stupid, go. Just get the fuck out. So the upcoming schedule uh, is not good. Uh, I think we all know that it was. We knew this was going to be a bad stretch as as a whole. Um, basically, the second half of the year, we knew this, but. Um, next couple games, it's at Phoenix, at Clippers, at the Kings, at the Mavericks, at the Grizzlies, at the Nets. Uh, then we play the Blazers at home, Wizards at home, Jazz at home. Uh, I mean, that's, it's not great, man. Uh, just that's a road trip. We don't typically do well on. We're not, we're not a big fan of West coast road trips as a, as a franchise, as an organization, as a group of men, uh, we don't enjoy going out West and playing the game of basketball. It doesn't seem to work out with us. Uh, you know, it usually ends with like a, a one in five, a one in six road trip, two games. Maybe we steal. It never works out. Right. We never win in Denver. Right. For, for, there's always, there's always some nonsense that happens in Phoenix. There was the JR game winner. Right. But like, there, there's always some, you know, I just feel like, the, the Mavericks is the only game I'm like, really like looking forward to because for whatever reason, everybody loves playing the Mavericks. You know, I I don't know. I mean, this is just not a good stretch. They're not. How far? I mean, how bad can they they fall to? Is like the new question, right? Like I did. I was trying to put that question off for a year. Like, how bad do you think they can get to? Like, I I don't expect us to get to number one pick territory. I'm not even trying to go all you know. But it feels like reasonable. We can free fall our way into like mm, seven. Tough. Seven, right? Five, seven. seven. Can we get any, any chance then, at five? Just real quick, would you guys? I would flip this pick regardless. Oh, you don't got it. You don't got it. I know. Sell, I know. Yeah, sell yeah. me on, on, on trading the. I'm just tired. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I've, I'm, I've been uh, it's, I've been itching to trade these picks, man. I'm been, t- I see people like, oh, the tanks, tank season. It's like tank for what? Like, what are you really tanking for? For fucking the eighth pick again? Like, I'm over it. Like, Dep- we have a good player. They- Depends with where they get it, right, obviously. Right. But. I mean, if you're top three, I'm gonna shut up. But or was Jay Ivey? Jay Ivey seems to be everybody's uh, bell of the ball. So if we could get him, cool. If not, flip that pick because you finally have a guy that's proven to be like at least a top two option, maybe even a number one. Start to build out around him. Stop with this. The base hits. Yeah, no, I I agree. I mean, I would love Jay Ivey. Um, you know, there's a couple guys at the top of the job. I'm sure, you know, now that it's March, I'll get more well-versed on the job and things like that. And, you know, I'm sure you guys will have that season to hold it down for us. Um, but I, um, I'm also down to trade the pick, though, because it's just, like, bringing something can help us right now. Um, and because we're getting a higher pick than we – we didn't expect to have a pick. I mean, I didn't expect to have a pick this high. So, it's like we have a top-10 pick. That's a sweetener in a package. Like, you know, you trade a top-10 pick and, like, two other first round picks and a young player, you can get yourself anything for a team that's, you know, feeling like they have to get rid of something. So that's definitely a powerful asset. So hopefully the pick is as high as possible, but I'm definitely open to moving it, especially, you know, 
if they remember the Lakers were able to get Anthony Davis because they got up to four in the lottery. Not to say the lottery is going to be friendly to us, but you know, hopefully we're able to base our package for a player and you know for the high caliber player on this pick we're able to get here. It'd be really nice. It'd be really nice to be able to you know get up to three or something like that. Have your choice to take Jaden Ivy or you know moving that pick and one or two other picks for SGA, whatever it may be. But yeah, I'm, I agree. So it's a pick. Yeah, it's been it's been time, man. I think you know you got you got to take some big swings, man. We already can't play the kids that we have. So obviously, if you get a top top pick, you would expect them to find some minutes. But even then, it's like you know. Whatever the team is next year, even if you do a, a retool, they're still going to be vets and vets are still going to play and get minutes, you know, like it's not going to be, you're never going to have like seven draft picks playing to fill out a rotation. It just doesn't work that way. It, it's not a thing, you know, it, mo- there's 10, ro- uh, 10 man rotations in the NBA. They're not all, you know, one to, you know, first to third year players. So uh, it is what it is. I think you just got to, you know, I, I, w- I would just flip it at this point, you know, it depends what you get, but I mean, I, it's always easy to say flip it, but I would always flip it if somebody's available. It depends who's available, but uh, yeah, I don't know. So, look, uh, t- tough stretch of games coming up, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, either way, uh, season's essentially over more or less. We're looking forward to next year. Uh, but, you know, like Sean just alluded to, we'll have draft season and stuff coming up, which, you know, I thought we were going to get more than a year off from like he- heavy needing draft coverage. I, I was, you know, not that I don't enjoy draft season, but I was just like, man, it's not, it's, it's nice, like, to not expectedly have to, like, all right, guys, that time of year again, we, we, we expectedly, you know, lost the, the amount of games required to be miserable at this time of the season. And uh, it's time to get onto the draft stuff. But, you know, we'll, we'll have you covered with that. You know, always, you know, we have draft guides and things that'll be coming out, you know, now that we're, we're, we're back in the lotto, baby. We're back in the top 10. Uh, undeniable. You can't, we are inevitable. You can't keep us out of Tankathon. You can't keep us out of the top 10. Just when you thought we were finished, we dropped back down. We did it again. We're back in it. Uh, we're addicted to the late 10th round pick, like late 10s. You know, that's all that we want. We, if, if, we're, if we could pick between seven and 10, we'll fight for that spot. You know, we'll believe for that spot. We need to pick between seven and 10 in the NBA draft. We need it. It's our respective spot. It's our birthright. We own the Kevin Knox slot, you know, well, that's, that's our spot. That's where we need to be. So uh, we will have draft guides and things like that coming out. So of course, stay tuned for that. Um, that's more or less all that I've got, you know, just make sure you keep uh, checking out our prize picks of the night. Uh, again, we are handing out money, folks. This is not a read. This is just facts. Handing out money. I, I can't stop making selections that are winners. I These guys are miserable in Slack because I have to mention it all the time how much winning that I'm doing w- with these TKW picks. And, of course, they also know it because they are also winning because we we're all riding these picks. And if you are smart and like making money, you will also ride these picks with us. So just go to the link. Uh, it's on our Twitter. Use code TKW, get a deposit match, buy a little bit of money, just start making some money with us because it's a beautiful thing. Uh, RJ Barrett overs are the move uh, with anything. Put it with anything, it, it's it's instant money. Uh, that's all I've been doing. I, I put RJ and Harden in anything lately, and that's like t- t- two out of three, two out of four. Every leg is already 50% done. So make sure you guys are checking that out. But, um, yeah, man. Uh, Tough, like like Sean said before too. You know, it's just I feel like we keep talking about the same stuff. It, it, it's tough sometimes. You know, when you get to these like this is like the purgatory ending of the season. You know, where you're just like just bad enough to have kept you interested in case you had a shot, but just not. You know, just a little bit of both, and it just didn't really work out the way that we uh, we had an hope, but. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we have a good end of the season here. Our RJ, like all I need is RJ finish twenty five a night all the way through. That's it. Keep, keep the average going up, and uh, we'll ride off into the sunset. Uh, you know, looking good that way. So we will talk to you guys probably for Monday. Looking like so. You know, we'll we'll come to you after the uh, other side of this uh, trip starting off. 
you know, we'll see what happens. Obviously, uh, we don't expect many positive things, but nonetheless, uh, we will come to you with that coverage there. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side. Take it easy. Adios.